This year we have uh, somebody who's coming back, a radio journalist, uh, TV3, who are presenting a project. Ferran Clavel is going to tell us about it. It's uh, a call for projects that they funded or co-funded. Three of them are quite uh, advanced. I think Ferran is going to tell us about uh, some of them. I think this is something that started out one or two years ago, I believe, and, and the results are, are being very positive. As you know, Ferran Claver is Head of Innovation and Digital Media Audiences at Catalan Audiovisual Media Corporation. For the last 15 years, he's taken part in the creation and development of various interactive services at CCMA. And he has also worked on interactive documentaries at TV3 and published several books. He's also served as a jury member in several editions of the Webby Awards and the Digital Emmy Awards. It's a joint uh, presentation with uh, Ferran. Ferran will lead for about 20 minutes. And once again, it's a pleasure to have Ferran with us. Thank you. Good afternoon. My presentation will be short because I want to make the most use of these 15 to 20 minutes by telling you first what TV3 channel's strategy in our, in our go for these interactive documentaries and also letting you know about some of these developments, some of these projects we will later get to see. So, I wanted to tell you how was the call that we launched some year ago. Last year I was here, not much to say, I must admit, because we were still screening the projects, had not been selected yet, but now we have chosen some of these. And other than this call for documentaries, an open call for documentaries, and out of which we shortlisted six, we've also carried out several initiatives, such as the screening or broadcasting of um, Falciani's documentary incorporating an interactive part into it. We also were, had a different call, uh, more of an educational approach, this known as Eridiana, targeting at explaining uh, Catalan literature in the 20th century, we, and this related to a historical timeline. And these are the six projects that we selected in our call. Indeed, this call was made to support a series of projects that we believe to be meaningful and interesting in some areas. Is as a matter of fact, a kind of support we provide to them, even though at the end of the day it's up to the producers to bring this about and probably they will need to find for some extra funding sources. Let me just briefly tell you about each of them. MT Tool. This is the first one that was launched last November. It was done together with the Pompeo Fabra University and it's worked quite nicely. And you can take a further look at the website you can see down here. It was also introduced in the last edition of InterTalks. Another project uh, that we selected was Sex and Maracas in Chihuahuas um, on the life of Chavidia Cugat, also with a documentary that will be broadcasted by us, and also an interactive work that you will be able to see tomorrow, I think, at half past six in the afternoon, included in this Talks Film Festival, where you will be able to see, look at it more in detail. These are just some of the pictures that I've received, but tomorrow you'll get to see it in full. Quite a fun, nice project. Another one, Diaries de Preso, Diaries of Prison. These are just models, very early prototypes. This is, uh, these are still ongoing works. Another one, Sexies more like uh, consultancy, coaching on sex for teenagers, very different type of approach. And then La Trucada, phone call, it was a project that 
was selected revolving around transplants, organ transplants, where the user is placed in the situation of having to coordinate a transplant and having to make decisions on this regard. And finally, is the Orgul de Bash related to a documentary we also broadcasted at the Patti d'Alderera documentary on the Bash de Brugat County, close to Barcelona, where there is quite an innovative doc that you'll get to see. So I wanted to introduce Isabel Fernandez and Anna Carreras because they will tell you about this Orgul de Bash project, even though still some time left, but quite an outstanding result, I must say. Hello, my name is Isabel Fernandez, the director and producer of documentaries. She is Ana Carreras, designer of interactive experiences, engineer and digital artist. And we've been working at Alpati for three years, working on interactive docs, interactive projects. And we are now working along with the TV3 TV with this title, Orgul de Bash, which would be translated as something as Southern Pride. Because precisely south of Barcelona, we have the Bash de Brugat County. This is a county that has been quite under pressure because of the developmental needs of the city of Barcelona, where most of the infrastructures that Barcelona requires for transport and for services are cutting through its landscape. But beyond this, there is a river, there is a delta, one of the most fertile grounds for agricultural production. And because of the uh, local supporters of the territory, uh, even though many people in Barcelona is fully unaware of this thing, as I was saying, in the last 50 years, a significant part of these agricultural areas have been preserved. I will show to you some pictures so that you see what's uh, seen from this southern county. And um, this is a bachelor regard, so you get to see also these and these as well. We produced for um, the Catalan TV broadcaster also the Patti d'Alderera which would be roughly translated as the backyard, in order to claim this area. And after producing this documentary, we are now working on the web extension for this project in order to give a greater say, a greater voice around these people on this topic, people that are living, supporting this territory from different lenses. Bash is a documentary film, 53 minutes, related to 3D map, where you geolocate different sets and scenes in the movie, where you get to access extended content that are part of these sequences that you find in the documentary, but also you can have access to other content related to this, but not specifically to the documentary that we've been producing. This morning, I was listening to all these talk pieces, such as the Canadian project on the environment. They were talking about the length of the works, and we are experimenting here much. We are experimenting on merging this 3D map with a long feature film, and then different area where we will be working with a smaller peel. Some of them we call them mini docs because there are some that last between five to seven minutes and some others that last that are less storytelling in approach and, and more contemplative between 46 to one minute and then some other more contemplative that are at about between two and a half and three minutes. Generally speaking, we want to provide an immersive experience of visiting, exploration and discovery of this county by exploring this content, which 
uh, stems from the storytelling behind the documentary or once you get into the map by um, strolling around it and going back into the documentary whenever you want to. Contents are organized in five in four different areas, sorry. What we call first the landscape postcards, natural environments and nature watching. These are between two and a half and three minutes. And then agricultural spaces. These are mini talks portraying the farmer and their territories. And then we also have some regional uh, territorial pieces that we where we resort to interviewing someone telling about uh, hard time a difficult time where for instance the uh, river mouth was shifted or this type of things 3d and animation webgl and a career as will later browse through it and we'll tell you more about it there is also a space toying around with the notion of a video game because we wanted to create a space that was attractive to young people and because we also wanted to explore the video game language in order to direct the navigational experience. Good afternoon. I will be showing you the prototype we have prepared, fully functional. You will see that some minor color adjustments are still missing, but other than this, you will see the functional website where we where we have embedded this interactive material. This is a web page. This is not pre registered. This is not an animation. So I will be clicking and browsing. I'll be telling you as I go along. But this is what people will eventually find when they click into this project, which begins here. You see here is the linear documentary. As you can see, this is the linear documentary. 
been brought onto the web. And one of its specificities is that every now and then you get to see some messages here extending the content and if you are interested into some of the things you might see in the landscape and this is related to the map you could access and you could jump onto that point to see where these recordings have been made and even to extend it with some parts that are not seen in the linear documentary so and other than scheming or going through the linear viewing, you can relate this to some areas in the map. Now you've seen one, obviously <laughs> now it's gone, so probably. So up here you see some flags, some signs, so that you can extend the content and by clicking them you close the linear documentary and then you can see on the map that part that extends a documentary. These are all clips, video clips, that just like Isabel was saying, are structured in different categories. For instance, this one showing territory. Um, you can explore this type of postcards on the map. As a matter of fact, here the viewer, the user, can either go back to the documentary or he might stay and further explore this universe that he has just found. Here on the map you can see the different with different color codes the four storytelling lines here. All of them are on but when browsing we expect from users to to toy around and to build your own personal narrative such as you could track the different postcards related to the documentary or here you could scan around the map you can zoom into different areas, you can rotate, you can scout the area. This is, by the way, Montserrat Mountain. And you can even investigate about things that you might be, that you might feel like interesting. Or, and by screening through these four different areas, these four different lines down here, that can provide you either a postcard-based narrative or an agricultural-based narrative, amongst other. Yeah, let's take a look at the agricultural line. We only have very uh, small pieces, but, but then the project will launch with nine pieces, which are growers' portraits, and about seven pieces of natural landscapes and then 30, 32 postcards. Down here, it would be great if we would get to see some of them. But this is, for instance, something that we've done based on archives, domestic archives, that was provided by the community that's now closely related to the project where we've been working since the documentary was launched and that are helping us into creating a group of people 
revolving around this because as you may imagine this is a prototype with a given amount of content with the prospects of these uh, including more and more content yet limited by the available budget but this is a project to keep these open on a permanent basis so we will try and enlarge these ourselves but then on a third stage for this project we also want to bring in the community so that they can contribute with their own content and we are about uh, we are just finalizing how this is done Es diu Cal Farinetes i ara ens eh com jo soc el nano de la família, em va sorgir el nom del nano Farinetes. Una mujada és mitja hectàrea. Són 4.900 i pocs, no és ben bé 5.000 metres quadrats. Ara mateix porto dues mujades i mitja, quasi tres, no arriba a les tres mujades, d'horta i de fruiters porto dues i mitja. La masia aquesta que està aquí és un magatzem que ja portava el meu avi quan ell treballava. Ostres, no, 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 al revés. Cap allà a la terra. Pica, pica, no, no, has de picar aquí. This is the nanofarinetas, one of the few young farmers that are going into agricultural lands. So apparently we have to stop here. I'm not sure if we have time for questions. Well, anyway, we'll be around and we'll be pleased to answer to your questions or comments, doubts. Thank you. We will have time for one question, just one question. Yes, just time for one question. Yeah, one quick question, uh, because we really are out of time. I know that this looks like an impressive project. Any questions? No?